In this video, let's take a look at how easy it is to add self-hosted web fonts in Adobe Muse. Adobe Muse includes a whole series of web fonts that are accessible from the Add and Remove Web Fonts window. Now, there are hundreds of designs here, but as a designer, you'll probably agree with me, you can never have too many typefaces as you're trying to explore and grow your own design. The self-hosted web font feature in Adobe Muse allows you to access web fonts you may have already purchased and downloaded from third-party foundries such as fonts.com, Morasawa, or services such as Font Squirrel or font to web As long as you've purchased and downloaded the system and web versions of that typeface onto your machine, you'll be all set. Let's take a look at how I might implement this feature. So I'm working in the Katie's Cafe website, and I've got a typeface selected for this headline area here, but I'd like something a little more personal, a little bit more handwriting looking. So I've gone ahead and purchased a handwriting font that I think would be better for the design. Let's go ahead and look on my system to where I've downloaded that font. So it's called Omatic, and I've got, you'll notice when I purchased the font, it gave me both the system font, known as a desktop font, also, it gave me the web instances of this font. So I have an EOT, SVG, and the WAF file format. That's important if I'm going to host this font along with my site. So I have this in a folder. You'll notice I also have Jackalope, another font that's available. One thing I need to do as part of my configuration is be sure to install the font as a desktop font. So I'll go ahead and double click on that typeface and make sure that it's installed in my system by clicking the Install font on the Macintosh. When I come back into Muse, I'm now ready to include those typefaces with this project. So for that, I'll pull down on File to Add and Remove Web Fonts. And instead of the standard web font window here, I'm going to click on the Self-Hosted Web Fonts tab and I have the ability to then drag and drop a folder here or browse to a directory. I'm going to click on Browse. And here's the directory, Katie's Fonts, where I have both sets of typefaces. I'd like to include both because I'm not sure which one I'm going to use quite yet. So with that folder selected, I'll click on Choose. And Muse is going to run through and look for, notice here, all of the web instances of those fonts. The WAF, EOT, and SVG are now included for the Amatic Bold, the Regular, and the Jackalope web fonts. I'm going to click Continue. And you'll notice I have a managed screen here now that shows information about each typeface. Now, the Amatic Bold and the Amatic Small Caps, that installed just fine, but there's a problem with Jackalope. I can go ahead and hit this little wrench tool and take a look at what's going on here. I noticed that I forgot to install that desktop font for Jackalope. So I'm going to go ahead and install that. I'll be right back. OK, I've went ahead and installed Jackalope in my system folder. So now in this missing font area here, I'm going to go ahead and match to that system font. And I'm just going to type Jack in the filter so that I can get there more quickly. And there it is. I'm going to go ahead and click OK. And I now get a green light. Everything's all good that that font has been matched. If I switch over to the Browse window, you'll notice that I can choose these fonts now in my project. So I've got Amatic and Jackalope Pro. I'll click OK. Here on my design canvas, I'm just going to scroll now down to the typeface that I want to change. I'll go ahead and click on that typeface. And like any other font, I can come into my little pull down here. Notice how in the web fonts area, I have the standard web fonts that are hosted by Adobe. And I have my web fonts that I've associated with this project. I'm going to select Amatic Bold. And I'll go ahead and make it a little larger. We'll make it 80 pixels in size. I'll come in and redefine that paragraph style so that it uses that typeface. And when I pull down on File to preview the page in the browser, Muse is going to render the page content. As I scroll down, let's go to the Fold section here rather quickly. Notice I have that typeface. It's selectable. It's resolution independent. So as I scale up or down, it's dynamically scaling. So let's talk a little bit about how Muse is going to handle this self-hosted font. I'm going to switch over to my desktop. I've gone ahead and exported all of the Katie's Cafe website to an HTML folder. Makes it easier for you and I to look at the site content. What you're seeing is what we will FTP up to any hosting platform that I publish this site to.
Notice in the Katie's Cafe folder, I have all of the usual HTML, CSS, and JavaScript content. But I now also have a fonts folder that has all of these self-hosted fonts that I want to work with and that will be included with the FTP upload when I get there. So with the self-hosted web font feature, typographic control has never been greater. I encourage you to go give it a try.